peacocks and the guineas leave us alone while we're doing this because I'm going to uh, I'm going to make some cornmeal muffins here. And uh, for those who it's getting just almost warm enough that I'm thinking of. Oops, one second. I gotta prop my door here. It's getting just warm enough now that uh, that I'm thinking of opening my windows. This is a summer kitchen here, so I have four big windows, and I know you guys can't see it, but. There's these big windows that are screened in, and so basically this whole building on uh, the north and south side just open right up into one great big huge screened in porch, and it works really well, and I'm getting just about there that I'm going to do that, but uh, I haven't started yet because cornmeal muffins take a nice hot oven, around 400, 425, maybe even up to 450, and um, we, <laughs> we need to have a little bit of... Uh, I need to contain the heat in the building because it's about 32 degrees outside. It's just at freezing. In fact, there's still frost on the ground. Uh, so I got to keep the uh, temperatures warm inside the building to keep the oven hot. <laughs> so I've got the windows closed. But after that, I'm going to open all the windows up after I get done making this. Uh, working with cornmeal, cornmeal gets very tough the more it's worked. So before, we usually do it with two different, oh, hello, make a mess, with two different pans, one of them for dry, one of them for wet, and then by the time we're mixing those two together, we want everything well blended, so all we have to do is just get the dry uh, batter wet. So we're going to start here with the uh, ingredients for our cornmeal muffin. So we're going to do about a cup of flour. That's just plain. This is regular unbleached flour. And then we're going to go with two tablespoons of sugar. We need our salt. I want about half a teaspoon of salt. Then I want my baking powder. So I'm just going to kind of mix that together before I add my uh, cornmeal. And my cornmeal I am going to put in about one and a half cups of cornmeal. So for those who, if in case I didn't say that, that's one cup of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, um, two and a quarter tablespoons of baking powder, about a half teaspoon of salt, a cup and a half of cornmeal. And I'm going to just make sure that's all mixed together. And again, we just want this all to be incorporated so by the time we just add uh, our liquid ingredients, we don't have to mix at all, we just have to moisten the dry. So, get that all done. So, there's our dry ingredients. And then, in our other, um, in our other pan, we're going to combine a cup of milk. And about four tablespoons. Then I'm going to put in two eggs, my two eggs that I have, and I'm going to do this first in another bowl. Then we're going to kind of mix these eggs. So now I'm just going to move, put all of this together. liquid ingredients to your uh, dry ingredients. You want everything well blended. So I'm going to, because of course oil is going to rise to the surface, I'm going to keep mixing this right up to the point I put it together. Oop. Well, I will start mixing again in just a second. I want to make my little well here because that kind of helps you mix things together a little faster. Okay. That way I keep my oil now I'm just going to quickly blend these things. Like I said, all I want to do is just get the dry ingredients wet. We're not doing this to um, blend anything. That we've already done. We're just wetting our dry ingredients. batter put together. Cornmeal muffins are really easy to do. And then I've got right, 
I don't know if you guys can see it, but right below, nope, you guys can't. Right below you is my muffin tin. I'm going to make fancy muffins. I'm going to, real quickly, I left just a little grease in the bottom of this. I'm going to run some grease over. Uh, if you have cast iron, the more you cook in it, the uh, better that it is. So if you got something that's kind of, you got it because it was cool looking, you still got to cook in it every now and then or do something with it. Uh, that way you don't have to, you know, you're going to have your, uh, it won't rust and you won't have to keep re-seasoning it all the time. So I'm just putting a little oil down in this thing. And I'm going to go over to the oven in just a minute and I'll show you that. We're just going to put a little bit of this in each one of these. So here's my little fancy dude thing. And my oven cooled off to about 375, not what I wanted to see, but it did. So we're going to work with what we got. Um, now, my particular oven, I'm going to take you guys, uh, let's see, how am I going to do this? Pull you guys over here. My uh, oven does have a thermometer on the outside, and the thermometer works pretty well. But, just to be on the safe side, I also have a second thermometer on the inside. And uh, anyway, I'm going to put this in here. And on a hotter oven, at my 400, 4, whatever, it would have been... I'm actually going to kind of put these guys over here. Um, it would have been... took about 25 minutes. But because it's going to take just a little bit longer, it, it's going to take me probably 35 minutes or so. But we're going to keep checking on them, and I'll show you as we go along. But I won't make you watch the whole thing as I'm doing all my stuff here. And if it doesn't stay shut, I prop it shut with a piece of wood. Oh, but it did. Yay! So there we go, and I'll be back um, in just a little bit to uh, check on it and see... Oh, okay, well, I took the first batch out, and I thought I turned the camera on, but I didn't. So what you're kind of looking for, this one here might be a little bit further gone than what it should be, but what you're looking for is a little bit of brown. And uh, then I just loosen the thing. Now, if you uh, are actually making them in muffin tins, you're probably going to want to, you know, you, you don't have to, but if you're good at testing them, you're probably going to want hot. You're probably going to want to uh, get down and... And, you know, stick a toothpick in there or stick your knife in there and see if it's done. But with these, see, these are very shallow. So you don't get a whole lot of, uh, that's not a big worry. And I did open the window up. Aha. Let me put this over here. And shut down. Well, here, let me show you what I'm doing as I'm. Actually, what i got to do is take that off. I have the uh, big oven mitt on it. I don't think I can actually handle the camera with the big oven mitt. I actually opened the window here because, uh, well, if you look here, here's 80, this is Fahrenheit, here's 100, this is 90, it is actually about 94 degrees in here, which is a tad bit on the warm side. So now I'm done cooking, and I'm going to, uh, and I wanted a hot oven. If I'd wanted a cooler oven, I would have closed this down earlier. But I wanted a hot oven, so now I'm going to kind of close that down, and uh, this is going to slowly have the fire be put out. Now, if you want to have it like, so you just want to use the stove or the oven for heating, you kind of close it down to where you got just a little bit, and that keeps the fire from blazing hot. Um, uh, it, it keeps it a little cooler in the house, but it also makes it so you don't have to every 20 minutes throw wood in the fire. And uh, so then I'm going to put this, leave this sitting right on top here, and that's going to really just cook all the garbage and stuff off of it instead of washing it. And then when it gets done, when it, all this stuff turns basically to ash, I can just brush it off. That's one of the easiest ways to take care of um, cast iron you know, as opposed to scrub it up because then sometimes if you scrub too much you got to re-season it and this way here it can just burn all this stuff off and then when it turns to ash we'll clean it all up but anyway let me put my thingy over here these are my uh, little corn muffins here and they're 
that actually looks pretty good. So we're ready to go. I've got a thing of hot apple cider that I left sitting on the stove. That's really easy. You just put hot apples or put your apple cider into some container, heat it up. In the uh, other, in the oven in the house, I could have done it out here, but I started it in there. So uh, we have uh, clam chowder made with. It's not actually clam chowder. It's mussel chowder made with freshwater mussels. Uh, everything. Uh, Basically, everything in that came out of the garden or out of the wilds. Uh, the freshwater mussels came from the creek just down the hill here. And then we have for our side dishes a, um, ooh, what is it? It's, oh, roasted vegetables. Everything but the olive oil from that came from the farm here. Or, you know, we either grew it or uh, got it from the wild. And then our dessert is a apple crisp. Normally I'd like to have an apple blackberry crisp, but, but this year we didn't get blackberries because of the drought. But anyway, this is my cornbread. I'm going to get that in along with some hot apple cider. and We're going to eat. Everybody's getting ready to sit down for dinner. So I'm going to leave you guys to be and we're going to sit down and have ourselves some a real nice down home dinner tonight. So that's how you bake in an oven. Not that much difficult. The only difference, and I'm going to get going here real fast, is it takes about 45 minutes to heat it up as opposed to um, your own oven, which may take 15. So you got to think ahead a little bit. But other than that, going great. i got to get going so I can have something to eat while it's still hot.